Okay, I'm now live. Here we go. <laughs> Something about turning the camera around. Oh, here we are. Okay, guys. I am live on Periscope. <laughs> oh my gosh. How are you all? Okay. There we go. Now that I've settled in a little bit, uh, this is my first time, so I'm trusting that, oh, there we go. I think the lighting is a little better. I have a lamp on over my, over my, uh, easel where I have my watercolor, which is my current one. I know I said that I was going to give you a little sneak peek of, uh, what I'm working on right now. I'm almost done with it, actually. And when I looked at it this morning, uh, <laughs> I started seeing more stuff that I wanted to do with it. So um, instead of it being complete for today's broadcast, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, not complete, but it's close enough anyway. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm Don Herring. I'm founder of Refresh with Don Herring at donherring.net. And I'm a watercolor artist. I'm host of Journal Chat Live on social media. And a lot of folks know me in that in that place. And we have a Journal Chat Live Facebook group. And that sort of thing. So, anyway, um, so I said that I would show you a picture or a close-up of my watercolor painting, so I'm going to do that right now. I'll have to flip the camera. And here is the view. There we go. I guess you can... That looks like it's... That'll work for now, right? Anyway... So what I wanted to uh, talk about concerning this particular painting is that um, I use a, I'm, I'm primarily a dry brush watercolor artist. I know a lot of watercolorists use a lot more water, like washes and things of that nature. And um, I am primarily a dry brush watercolor artist. And I think the reason why I like it that way is because um, I find it easier to control the color and blending and uh, just the whole process of creating texture and layers and things of that nature. There's a lot of layering that that takes place when you are doing a watercolor painting. At least it is for me anyway. And um, this particular one, I started off with a very large, I'll just use my hand to show you how I did this, very large circle, circular motion with a wider brush than what I usually start a painting with. Most of my paintings I usually start with, with just small dots of color and then I just see where it takes me. But with this particular painting, I decided to start out with a dry brush, very, very light wash that that I started right in the middle here and then I kind of went around like this, kind of like in a spiral motion. And that's basically how I started the painting. And from that point, I just started picking up on what I could see as far as like different areas where I could incorporate like detail and texture as you can see in here I do a lot of a lot of stippling in here with the with dots of color that's one of my favorite parts to watercolor art to begin with is being able to use that technique and then of course I have I use these lines in here to bring out the texture and one of the things that I love about watercolor paper is that the texture is so easy to see on the page. So once you've got some color on the page, it's just a matter of picking up on those texture lines and bringing them out and just layering color upon color upon color. And uh, it does, it takes a lot of layering of that color to bring out the edges that I've created here. And I absolutely love the whole process of what that actually looks like as I go through it. And of course, like I said, I don't use a lot of water. I use a lot more pigment than water. 
Although, I'll show you my little palette here that I've got down here. When I use when I use watercolor, this is kind of how I do it. I have my little cup of water here that I keep very close by. And when I mix it, I often add more water to it as I go. Just And then I test it. I, have, I usually have a little pad of paper here on my lap. <laughs> yes, I hold this on my lap when I'm painting. And I kind of use this paper as like a testing sheet so that I can see how dark it is. And then if it's too dark, I can add more water. But I use a very small paintbrush, as you can see. See how small that is? Very, very small paintbrush. And, uh, and the reason why I use a really small paintbrush is because dots of color are easier to control when you use a very small, this is a spotter brush. As you can see, see it's a spotter. It's by Princeton Art and Brush Company that I use here, a three, three slash zero size spotter. And that's what I've been using on this particular painting that I have here. And um, it's funny, sometimes I think that I should work with something a little bit bigger when I'm working on detail, but I just prefer the smaller, the smaller brushes because that works for me. And it really helps me to bring out all that textural detail that you can see, especially along the bottom, like right in here. You can see all that textural detail, and that's actually what I want to do a little more work on, although it's actually pretty detailed already right here, right in here, all these little marks that I've made across here. And the spotter brush comes in handy when I am, when I'm doing that. So I, I really enjoy the process of creating texture with watercolor paper. And uh, so I just thought I would show you a sneak peek of, um, I, I'm titling this particular painting Deeper. And because every time I came to it, every time I would come to the painting, I found myself thinking, I'm just, I, I need to go deeper. Every time I would look at it and I would work on more, on more sections and more areas where I would add more detail, go deeper, go deeper. And I think one of the favorite things that I really love about the process of watercolor is that as you add more layer, you know, like say in the edging right in here, where you can see that right in there, it kind of gives it a depth and even dimension in, in the watercolor painting itself so that it doesn't look flat. And one of my goals with this particular painting was being able to, um, almost create like a, like as if you're looking into something. So that there's, a, so there's actual central depth right in here. And then it comes out and <laughs> like a big spiral. And of course, when you go down into the spiral, you're going deeper. So I guess maybe that's why the word deeper kept coming to mind as I was working on this. And uh, so that's my little sneak peek for you. And I guess I will switch out. And now that we've talked about dry brush and the way I do things as far as, you know, how I work on my watercolor paintings. And of course, this particular painting that I was just talking about, um, like I said, I started off with that, with that bigger dry, uh, uh, washer, you know, wash that I started with, with the circular pattern. And I actually did that with... I'm going to show you another painting that I already have on my website, but I'll show it to you in my actual art gallery here so that you can see it up close. Right here. Yeah, this is this one I did. You can see it on my website, on my art gallery, but this is an up close shot of it uh, on the shelf in my in my gallery here. And this particular one is called A Beginning. And I started this painting pretty much the same way where I started with a really large sweeping motion with a larger paintbrush. And that was the first time that I actually have done that with a watercolor painting. So I kind of feel like I'm breaking into a new, a new approach, if you will. I don't know if I'll continue doing it that way or not, but anyway, so I think, uh, I, uh, just wanted to show you how I've been working with that for the past couple of paintings. Sometimes I pick up on something like a technique like that, that I think will work. 
and and then other times I'll go with something else. I'll just go with whatever my intuition pulls me into, and that's why I love intuitive painting so much because I never know where it's going to take me. And this approach with um, oh, switch back to me here. That's why this approach has been really interesting for me because um, it has given me a, a chance to um, to experiment. And I always talk about experimenting as an artist and how it's really fun to, uh, to try new techniques that, uh, that I've never tried before. And if something comes to mind and I say, you know what, I really feel like doing something different. I just go with whatever comes to mind because you never know where it's going to take you. Yeah, I really have a good time doing that. So I've been very pleased with the results of starting off with that a little bit of a wash in that circular motion and I'll see if I want to continue working in that realm for my next painting which I will be starting after this one is complete. So that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you on this particular broadcast uh, and I trust that, uh, that you'll check it out. You have a great day and I'll talk to you guys soon.